Step 2. Focus on what you want. Now that you have a clear idea of your vision and you know it inside out because you visualize it every day, you read it out loud, you erase it and you write it down from memory day after day, it becomes very, very clear. And the second step of the law of attraction is to focus on it. Now, focus is not just a simple word. It involves heavy lifting in your mind. The bottom line, your overarching goal with step number two is to believe in your vision. Believe that it's possible. First, you need to believe that it's possible. Yes, it's possible that there is a job opening in that corner office. Yes, it's possible that there is this huge mansion on the other side of town. It's possible that people can develop this successful business. Whatever your vision is, believe that it is possible. This is the key. This is the bedrock of success, because if you don't believe your vision can come to pass, then you're just wasting your time. You may end up undermining yourself or sabotaging yourself because, at the back of your mind, you're saying to yourself, well, I'm just playing mind games with myself. This stuff is not real. Who am I fooling? Then it all falls apart because you did not believe in your vision. Believe that it is possible. Believe you can do it. The next step is to believe that you can do it. Not somebody else, not your friend, not your neighbor, not your brother, not your sister, not your parents, but you, individually, personally, can do it. This puts you in the middle of the picture. You are no longer just looking at your vision as some sort of speculation. This is no longer in the realm of theory or things that would be nice if there happened. Instead, you're putting it right smack dab in the middle of your life because it's you who can do it. That's what you believe. Believe that your vision is clear. Next, you have to believe that your vision is clear. If you did step number one correctly, this should come easily. A clear vision leaves no room for interpretation. A clear vision has no blind spots. Sure, there are spots that you have to fill in based on your set of circumstances, but there are no blind spots that will flat out surprise you or knock you back. Everything is clear, just like Michael Phelps' mental movie that he keeps playing for ultimate success. Act on your vision. After that, you have to believe that you can act on your vision. This is extremely important. If you believe this, then it means that you have the resources or you can have access to the resources. Also, it means that this is the right time because you can act on it. It isn't something that is speculative. It isn't something that is locked away until certain things fall into place at a certain time in the future nobody knows. Instead, you believe that you can act on it right here, right now. It doesn't matter whether it's a small baby step forward. There is an action you can take right now. Once you're able to do that, and this is a big step, the next step is crucial. For the law of attraction to work for you, you have to believe that your vision has already happened. This is where your faith really blows up because you know that you're just messing around and playing games with yourself if you cannot get it to this point. You have to make it to this point. Believe that it has already happened. How? Very simple. In your vision is to meet a very wonderful member of the opposite sex to be your future husband or wife. I got news for you. People meet the right one every single day. If your vision is to become a successful business person, guess what? There are tons of people who are doing that. Allow yourself the power of regularity, because when you assume that these things regularly happen, then the law of attraction starts working to reshape your personal ability to edit your reality. You start thinking a different way. You start talking about things in a different way. Your values are different. Your assumptions and expectations have changed. And this leads you to make better decisions and taking actions that gets you closer and closer to your grand vision. A crucial step in this direction is the belief that your grand vision, no matter how lofty it may seem, has already happened. You're not doing anything new or something far-fetched. It's not like you're trying to hatch dragons from extinct stone eggs. You're aiming for something that happens. Help yourself out by using belief boosters. Early on, I learned that if you try to will yourself into believing certain visions according to the law of attraction, it takes too much work. It's very easy to get run down. Ultimately, you feel the pressure of the other parts of your life and it really takes a lot away from you. I discovered that there are certain tools I can use 
to help me boost my belief. When I use these things in conjunction with each other, they create a self-sustaining, belief-boosting or energizing system. Reading Positive Quotes First, I devote a few minutes of my day to reading positive quotes involving my vision. They might not be directly related or extremely specific to my vision, but they are close enough. These positive quotes help me step motivated. They remind me that people have achieved what I'm trying to do in the past and they were able to overcome because they focused. They kept the main thing the main thing. They kept their eyes on the prize. These positive quotes that I repeat over and over again start sinking down into my heart. They become part of me. They become part of the assumptions I make. Case studies. Next, I also read case studies of actual people that have done what I want to do. If you are honest about your project, it's not really hard to do. Regardless of how grand you are or how seemingly massive your personal project is, somebody has done it before. If you feel that it's new or completely novel, you probably haven't been searching enough. You haven't done extensive research. Keep looking. You will find at least one case study that is similar enough to what you're trying to do. Study that story. Be inspired by it. Pay attention to their ups and downs. Pay attention to their challenges, but focus on what happened at the end. At the end of the story, the person won. End of story. Allow yourself to be motivated by that. Biographies. Another belief booster that I use involves biographies of people who inspired me. These are people who started with nothing. Many times people would laugh at them, dismiss them, call them crazy or idiots. But against all odds, these individuals were able to overcome themselves. I'm also particularly interested in biographies of people who overcame themselves. Believe me, the number one person who will try to sabotage you, undermine you, drag you down and hold you back is yourself. You have to recognize how you limit yourself and be ready for it. You have to be on the lookout for the many games you will try to play on yourself, so keep waiting or you don't try hard enough. Look at biographies, read through them, be inspired by them. Look for people who have overcome hurdles placed by other people or, most importantly, hurdles they themselves set to sabotage their own success. Make it part of your daily routine. Finally, make all this focus part of your daily routine. Invest time in it. Consciously say to yourself, I believe in my vision. And then start thinking about your vision. Use belief boosters. You may need to spend quite a bit of time at this stage before you take it to the next level, but it's definitely worth it. Integrate your belief into your daily life. Prior to this point, a lot of the things that you are doing simply just involved your mind and your emotions. As powerful as the human brain and heart are concerned, for things to change in your life, you have to act on your vision. I personally was able to do this using the following system. I would read my vision, focus on the case studies that I have researched, and give myself affirmations. I would repeat these affirmations consciously, purposefully, and slowly. I would savor every word. I would try to visualize every word. I would study how they flow into each other and what their impact is. I would figure out the different meanings that they suggest and really get into them and feed them into my visualization. After everything is clear to me, I would erase or rip up my written version of my vision, and then, after a few minutes have passed, from my memory, I would rewrite my vision. When I go through this process, I am reprogramming my personal operating system. I'm training my mind to override doubt, self-imposed limitations, painful trauma, or negative memories from the past, and worthless worries about the future. Instead, I focus on my vision. You should do this first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. This is crucial because when you are sleeping, your mind is engaged in alternative reality. It's clearing up your memory base, but it's making all sorts of reconnections. If your vision is an integral part of that, it becomes part of this reality that your mind brings into fruition. And the best part is that it happens subconsciously. You start behaving a certain way without being able to put your finger on why those changes have happened, but it's actually because of your willful action. It can actually be traced to the first thing you read and acted on in the morning and the last thing you read and acted on at night. If you keep doing this, you start consciously change what you say to yourself. 
you no longer call yourself an idiot. You're staying away from calling yourself a loser or any other negative self-talk. Just as importantly, you start changing how you talk to others. You no longer say, I don't have the money, I can't do it, who am I, or the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That goes away. Instead, people start hearing somebody new. You start talking by planting scenes of life into people's lives instead of weeds like, I can't do it, or what do you think you are? You have no money, it's failed before, what makes you think it's going to happen this time around? All those weeds, I call them mental weeds, start to shrivel and die, and you start planting seeds of life. In addition to changes in how you talk, you start changing the way you look. You probably have heard the saying, to make a million bucks, you have to first dress like a million bucks. Well, there's a lot of truth to that, because it reflects your self-image. It reflects the type of person you see yourself being. Again, going back to Michael Phelps, he doesn't see himself as the last guy in the race. Instead, he sees himself as the first guy, winning time after time, all day, every day. To be a winner, you have to start talking like one. Once you're talking like a winner, it's a good idea to start dressing like one and walking like one. Eventually, you'll start acting like a winner. But you have to start somewhere, and it all starts in your head. Eventually, it makes this internal change and reprogramming starts manifesting itself in how you talk and how you look, which in turn changes how people perceive you. If people saw a bomb before, and now you show up in an Armani suit, and you treat everybody like a million bucks, what do you think will happen? They will treat you like a million bucks. And soon enough, since you already believe you are a million bucks, and people saying you are a million bucks, it becomes a reality. That's how you man up. That's how you step up to the challenge and take life by the ears and take control. Quick note on the importance of action and manifestation. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this needs to be reiterated. The world does not care about your feelings. Get that through your head. Wrap your mind around it. Write it in stone. Sure, a lot of people talk a good game around you. They try to make you think that your feelings matter, and they do, to a certain extent, with your friends and family members. But for the rest of the world, feelings don't matter because everybody has feelings. If you want the world to respect you and to take you seriously, you only have to do one thing. Take action. When you do things, you change your world because now you are serious. The world knows you are not screwing around. You mean it. How does it know? Well, you change your actions. You have results to show for it. That's how the world judges you. Which brings me to the last stage of the law of attraction, manifestation. There are all sorts of hooky books written about this stage. In fact, they are written in such a sloppy and careless way that makes you think that this is all magical. There's nothing magical about this. Manifestation really boils down to believing so much in your vision that it changes your emotional state. If you can get to this level, the law of attraction is working for you. Why? Once you get to this stage, it's like being on a roller coaster. If you're being on a roller coaster, you know that there is a part of your trip where you go up to this steep incline and there start to slow down until a large chunk of the roller coaster is over that hump and then boom, it goes down at a high rate of speed. That's where you feel like your guts are in your mouth. Manifestation is getting to that hump because at that point, their world has no choice but to sit up and pay attention because you have allowed your vision, which you have carefully selected, rehearsed and fine-tuned to change your emotional states and all bets are off because your emotions are involved, your actions start to change. Let your emotional state change your mental habits. This is where you flip the switch from negativity to possibility, from possibility to positivity, and from positivity you go on to probability. Once you're at that probability stage, congratulations because the change is imminent. We all start from negativity. At some level or another, we feel we can't do it. We don't have access to the right stuff, we're not connected, and so on and so forth. There are just tons of toxic excuses that we're still in. That's where we start. But you focus so much on your vision that you are able to move from negativity to possibility. This is where you start thinking. Yes, it's possible, it's doable, it's not out of the ordinary, I can't write this off, it can't happen. 
And then from there you get to positivity, where you feel pumped up that with the right focus, with the right planning and with the right faith, this is going to happen. It's not like it can't happen, but it is going to happen. And then from there you go to probability, which is I've already put in a lot of time and the chances of this happening is very high. And then you get to imminent change where you're basically just inches away. You can smell it. You can feel the heat coming off your personal vision become real. Let your change mental habits lead you to a change actions. Let it happen. Again, going back to the roller coaster example, when you let your emotional state change your mental habits, it's like you're going over that hump. And after enough of the roller coaster have gone over that hump, you cannot stop the roller coaster because it's going downhill at a crazy rate of speed. That's what makes it so terrifying and fun at the same time. That's exactly what happens once you make the switch to that emotional state because it becomes harder and harder to stop this chain reaction until you let your changed mental habits lead to change actions. Let it happen. Stop doubting yourself. Give up on second guessing yourself. Let it happen. Small steps lead to big changes. Now don't get too excited. Profound changes often happen in small steps, but guess what? Even a tiny step forward is still a step forward. Take one step after another. Get used to it. Sure, there are baby steps, but get used to the small steps happening after each other, one right after the other. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then start taking larger steps. That's how manifestation works. No magic, no arcane tricks, no bullshit. It works with how your mind already works. Unfortunately, the way our mind normally works is that we often wait for things to just reach a desperate and sad state that we feel like we really have no other choice but to make a move. When you unleash the power of the law of attraction in your life, manifestation becomes more purposefully, orderly and systematic. You don't have to wait until the last minute. You don't have to put yourself in a situation where you're only driven to act when all the chips are down. Instead, you are in control. You call the shots. Things play out according to plan.